What's up, everybody? Tyra Bear here. The absolute best LGBTQ comedian in the world. All right, so if you see anything uh, wandering around behind me at any point, that is the ghost of my silly boyfriend. He is home right now. And also, if you'll notice, I did not, did not, did not finish clearing out that crate that I wanted to clear out. I'll get to it. I started on it, but it turned out to be more stuff than I was expecting, and some of it will just need to be put on a shelf because it's a lot of that kind of stuff. Like, I got rid of most of the papers, most of the bulk. I'm feeling good about everything. Last night, I was in Prescott, Arizona. The night before, I was in Kingman, Arizona, which added up to a lot of driving because when I'm within driving distance of where I live, I don't like to stay in hotels. I'm not a fan. I'm not a person who likes to stay in hotels, motels, holidays day in just for the hell of it. I'm not that guy. Some people feel good about it. Some people like to feel bougie. I don't feel bougie at all staying in a place that isn't my bed. I would rather be at home in my bed with my puppy, with my man. That's where I want to be, not out on the road. So that was really fun. Prescott was super fun. Uh, it was a different situation though in that we had well, we had one woman that was upset and she was trying to rile up all her friends because she didn't like some of the stuff that the opening comic was doing. The opening comic is a guy named Derek McFarlane. Derek McFarlane is a Phoenix comic. I asked him to work with me for this weekend. He did a really good job. He did what he was supposed to do. And I get it if nobody's having fun and the comic is just not doing well. Then I'll look at it and be like, okay, maybe this is something that I should maybe blame myself for a little more, but I was downstairs taking care of stuff at the door. And so I went up to see what was going on in the, in the room and everybody was laughing. So when it's like everybody's laughing and you're the one person who's upset and you're trying to make it seem like I'm supposed to handle you in some sort of way, like now your opinion matters more than everybody else's, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that. And then there was also a situation where she was like, uh, well, we're older and we're, and it was like, yeah, there's a lot of older people in there that are laughing right now. So how am I supposed to really... I wouldn't even say, how am I supposed to gauge you as you approach the door? Because I can't just look at you and say, okay, you're a young white woman. Usually young white women like my shows and the people that I put on with me. So you can come in. You're an older white woman. Last week I had an older white woman that looked like you get upset. So I'm not going to be able to allow you into the show. Like that would be ridiculous. And I'd be accused of ageism, discrimination, who knows what else, because anytime you're part of a crowd and and then one woman said that, uh, you know, that was with her crowd because this woman said she was fine. The other woman was like, I'm fine. I don't want my money back. I'm OK. And then the other lady was getting madder and madder. So the other one was like, well, he was kind of um, talking derogatorily or in a derogatory way about and she mentioned bisexuals, and I was like, bisexuals? I, I was like, I guarantee he wasn't saying anything bad about bisexuals. Like, the headliner, me in that case, is a homosexual. So he's, and she was like, no, you're not. And I was like, yes, I am. This is my boyfriend right here. And my boyfriend was sitting right next to me. And it was just like, stop grasping at straws because you want to feel like you're right. Just admit that the show wasn't for you and go ahead and leave. And I'm fine with that. I'm fine if you even leave during my set because you think I'm too much or you think I'm not being respectful enough with different groups. Like everybody knows what I do is edgy and that's in everything that people put, uh, like, you know, any kind of bio. And I know because I either... Well, I haven't written all of my bios. A few of them have been written for me. Like the most re recent one was written for me by a friend named Tiffany. And then I personally wrote another one. And I always try to make sure, not always try to make sure, I always make sure that people know that it's going to be an edgy show. You're going to hear some stuff that you may not hear other places. It may be some strong language involved. Like these are things that I try to make sure that people know before they get there. And if you look at my YouTube, there's another 
playlist on here that's called stand up and if you look at the stand up clips it's all edgy stuff so i don't know where people would get the idea that you're going to get a g rated show and i'm not going to change what it is we're doing because you one person don't happen to like something that gets said or a certain subject matter. I know that she said that uh, he was talking in a derogatory way about uh, about vets. And the joke that it, Derek does about vets isn't even about vets. It's about his uncle that was in the, in the Marine and how he uses every excuse to bring up the fact that he's a Marine. This is how a Marine does this. And he makes a really silly, like, you know, act out where he does like his uncle wrapping a birthday present like a Marine wraps a birthday present. But he doesn't say anything that's disparaging about Marines. And if you know anybody that's in the military or you have family members that are in, are in the military, you know some are chill and then every once in a while you get that really Arr! type. And that's just what he's making a joke of. So I didn't really... I couldn't say that I understood where she was coming from. And then she, of course, threatened with the Yelp review and everything else. And at that point, we were just like, okay, well, you know, do what you got to do. And one of the ladies completely jumped in my boyfriend's face, like not as an expression, like jumped in his face and was like this close from him telling him that she was going to make sure that the local newspaper heard about it and that they were going to write it up in the newspaper. And it's like, why is it? Just because you as one person don't like something, you think that now the newspaper needs to be involved. And not only was it like, at least if it was your original idea, I could get it. But I saw you come down. When you came down, you were asking the other lady what it was all about. And then as soon as she told you that she was offended by something, now you're the most offended person in the group. And it's like, no, you weren't. Technically, you didn't even know that you guys were supposed to be offended until your friend told you. So I don't care about any of it. This is just me talking talking to you guys about some of the behind the scenes that happens when you are actually doing a show. The venue was absolutely great about it. The name of the venue, if you guys ever want to go check it out or check out the comedy, is the Rickety Cricket. I did the Rickety Cricket two locations, which one was in Prescott and the other one was in Kingman. And... You know, I really appreciate the venue because they stayed very polite with the woman that was upset. But at the same time, the show runs independent of them. So it's not like they're all they do is really make money off the bar. They're not, um, you know, because they had us in, a, in an auxiliary room. So it's not like they are responsible for us. The show is our own thing and we're the ones that charge at the door. And so when it comes to having to do refunds or anything like that, all of that is our at our discretion. So at the end of the day, I would say probably what they'll have to do is, is look at the people that were satisfied and happy versus the one, no, two ladies that were supposedly super upset and see how that plays out for them. Because I can tell you that last night, that little room, it's not a huge room, but it was absolutely sold out and everybody was buying drinks and everybody was having a good time. And whenever anybody comes to me with any kind of complaint about that, I tell them, if you'd like, I can play you audio or send you audio of my entire set and you can hear the way it went. Like last night was taking pictures afterwards and it was a good good time and they got a good show and i guarantee you everybody got their money's worth from my set alone not bragging but i am the absolute best lgbtq comedian in the world enjoy your sunday mm -hmm.